Next speaker is adjunct professor, Dr. Roberta Manzani. She's the chief anesthetist for surgical day and non-operating room anesthesia at Humanitas University in Milan, Italy. She's also the chair of the European Society's uh, Committee on Ambulatory Anesthesia. And her philosophy and approach to current anesthesia day practice is very aligned with this topic, which is we can do better to administer the right anesthesia. Dr. Manzani, good afternoon and welcome. Thank you very much for the invitation and thank you also for the presentation. I speak to you today uh, about uh, the use and application of knowledge in uh, bariatric surgery. I want to share with you our philosophy because we married ERA's philosophy and we choose a bariatric surgery and uh, we define an anesthetic protocol. Before to have this protocol, we read it, all the guidelines and the good clinical practice of our scientific society, surgical and anesthesiological. Then we decide this final protocol. If you can go back, please, we can show stop here. So you can see our anesthetic Arabs protocol. Uh, we choose uh, a protocol opioid sparing and the multimodal analgesia approach. In this slide, uh, you cannot read that uh, we uh, use and we touch on to the surgeon to perform a tap block uh, before the beginning of surgery. Why the surgeon? Because the surgeon can has a, a very good direct vision and can perform perfect tap block. So we share with our surgeon this, uh, this moment. You can go on, next slide please. So how NOL can help us? We want, uh, we have a protocol. For us is the best protocol to treat our patient, but we need to, uh, to try to know and objectivate our choosing. We want to know if uh, our choice uh, of uh, pharmacological uh, uh, therapy and the moment when we administer these drugs is the best that we can do for our patient just to have the less post-operative pain. Second objective is that we want to understand when we have hyper on the hypoalgesia during intraoperative period. So we are using not correctly opioid or other type of analgesia. Uh, we can have uh, in the post-operative period a NRS score higher. Then we want to understand because we know which are the steps more painful for our patient point of view anesthesiologist and point of view surgeon. But we need to object also this thinking. So we need a monitor and NOL can help us to understand if our thinking is correct. Next slide, please. So another point is that we need to know the NRAs of our patient, all our patients, because we need to know the perception of the, our patient. So we ask about NRAs before surgery and after surgery. So we want to compare and try to understand if something is changing and why, and if our choices intraoperative for drug and other action are correct for the treatment of this patient. Second, we want to know the association between null indices and post-operative pain with NRS scale. So if I have a very high value, null value, intraoperative, I can expect a very high NRS score during the post-operative period, we want to know. Then identify the most allergenic phases I told you before, and then uh, know if we have a very poor control to pain intraoperative, we want to know if all the events can be correlated during all the step of this path of care. Next one, please. Practically, we collect data, but we start, we begin 
in the pre-operative period with a, a very excellent history taking of our patient because we needed to know also all the comorbidity of this patient. You know, sometimes these patients are on chronic pain and chronic opioid therapy because they suffer from fibromyalgia, arthrosis, neuropathy, etc. Level of specific painful analysis of null indexes every 10 minutes because we want to compare with this score also because we need to know that our patient is under an adequate hypnosis phases during all the surgery and then NRS we collected immediately after surgery and during the first or second day why immediately after the end of surgery because this patient tell us they have a very important pain in the middle of the thorax and this is a visceral pain so it depends of the technique surgical technique we can uh, try to feel better the patient if they wake up and walk a lot so if they move the movement is a partial solution for this type of pain and also because the movement is a solution for POMB, post-operative nose and vomiting. Next one, please. If we analyze this graphic, this is a woman, 39 years old, BMI 39, underwent severe gastrectomy, surgery duration one hour. You can see in the first phase, induction general anesthesia, intubation, uh, position of gastric tube, and performing tap block, we have a very high value of null. So here we wanted to do something and think something with a null value just to ameliorate the situation. After we have a suppression, then we have another spike. Here we are in the middle of the surgical time, then suppression, and the last phase, before the last phase, we administer ibuprofen 600 milligrams IV. So the last phase uh, with uh, skin suture, we have uh, a variation, a little spike for no value, but uh, all the average of no value is, is acceptable. At the end, we have the extubation, maybe a wake of the patient. All the time, these patients are very agitated, so we have a very high spike. Next one, please. So how null can be integrated? I told you before, we married with Eros philosophy. Eros philosophy is teaching us that we need to treat our patient in the time that uh, we, uh, we have to find the best solution for their health problem. So in this case, we know that we are doing all what we can do, all our best. But one of the underestimating problem is the post-operative pain. And also the literature is saying this to us. So drug titration specific protocol can help us to avoid the hyper and hypoalgesia. The effect of an incorrect therapy, you can see in, uh, in the table below. And we know that the result is delayed post-operative recovery. The next one, please. So what we are thinking to change in our protocol after the use and the application of the null interoperative period. We want to change the administration of paracetamol before the beginning of surgery and not intraoperative because we want to ameliorate the first time you remember the high value of null during in uh, the induction of general anesthesia. Then we wanted to, to introduce uh, a local anesthesia in truth with lidocaine spray before video assisted intubation just to ameliorate uh, this maneuver. And uh, last, uh, we wanted to try to share with our surgeon to perform tap block at the end of surgery just because we wanted to uh, collect the data from the pain before, uh, at the end, I'm sorry, at the end of surgery. We want to ameliorate also that phase that the patient arrives in recovery room. 
So I think we have some road to do, but with the help of NOL, we can ameliorate our protocol. Now, just a few minutes to share with you another point of view, another application of NOL, not under general anesthesia, but in a weight patient. The next one, please. In this case, you have an hernia repair surgery in a man 53 years old, hypertension and MRGE. The local anesthesia is performed from a surgeon and we administer a very light sedation and uh, uh, in continuous IV, we have remifentanil in a very low dosages. The next one. In the graph, you can see the, that it is very different, the graph from the other one under general anesthesia, because here the patient is awake, but the range of the value of null is very acceptable. We have just some spikes, but very, very thin, that are that, um, recorded a very high value of null. Local anesthesia, skin incision, and then in the middle of surgery, we administer ibuprofen 600 milligram high B. The next one, please. Uh, I have another one in the middle, but don't worry, I can speak about it. So uh, another thing that we need to remember is that in this uh, type of surgery, the surgeon needs the collaboration of the patient. So sometimes he has to do the patient to cough just to control if it's adequate the technique surgical. So in my opinion, we need NOL we, and NOL can help us to do the best choices for our patient. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Manzani. That was fabulous. I just had a quick question for you. So if I understand your goal, uh, you are using uh, NOL to help you evaluate the effectiveness of your multimodal analgesia interventions. And you chose bariatric surgery, which is a surgery where we're all concerned about sleep apnea and all these other things. Which is other surgeries would you think that you would go to next in establishing protocols using NOL? I think general surgery because uh, it is the surgery that has a, a more volume of activity and the more volume of patient. And now we have a lot of geriatric patients, so frailty patients. So I think it is uh, very useful to have known to tailor our choices for analgesia, multimodal analgesia. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you.